Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to build our sixth and final farming control, which is the date picker component. The implementation of this component is similar to the radio buttons and checkbox group component in the sense that we will again be using the render props pattern for the field component. However, we will use a new method that Formic provides to set a field's value. And since we have already seen in detail how that works, in this video, we are going to focus more on how to use a date picker library with Formic. Unlike the previous videos, I don't have a slide depicting the UI and the different props. It remains same for the most part. So instead, I want to quickly take us through the date picker library we will be using. The package we will be using is called React Date Picker. If I open their homepage, you get a glance of the date picker. If I scroll down a bit, we have an example. In the JSX, you can see that we have the date picker component and we have two props. Selected, which indicates the selected date and the onChange prop. The onChange handler receives the updated date, which is then passed back into the selected prop through a state variable. Make sure you keep these two props in mind because our date picker component is pretty much this with some formic code. Let's go back to VS Code and create our date picker formic control. We're going to implement this formic control again in three simple steps. First step, we write the code in a new component specific to the field type. In our case, a date picker component. Second step, we write code in the formic control component. Third and final step, we write the code in the formic container component, which will help us test the code in the browser. So let's begin with step one. For step one, we need to create a new component for the date picker formic control. So within the source folder, within the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called datepicker.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet RFCE to create a function component. Now I mentioned that we will be using the React Date Picker library. So let's install that. In the terminal, run the command yarn add React Date Picker. Once the installation completes, we need to import the component and the CSS. So in our date picker component, at the top, I'm going to copy paste the imports. I've called the default export from the library as date view, since I'm already calling the component as date picker. Apart from this, we would need the field and error message components from Formic and also the text error component. Let's import them. All right, we can now add the JSX. First, from the component props, I'm going to destructure label, name, and rest of the props. Then we return a div tag with class name equal to form control. This div tag will contain a label. The inner text is the label prop and the HTML4 attribute is equal to the name prop. Next, we add the field component. To the field component, we pass in the name prop and within the opening and closing tags, we add function as children, which is nothing but the render props pattern. In the previous two videos, we used to only destructure the field property from the render props. For this component though, we also need to destructure form in addition to field. From the form prop, we are further going to destructure a method called setFieldValue. This is a new method we are seeing for the first time in the series. What this method does is it allows you to programmatically set a field's value in the formic state. We will see its usage in just a bit. After this, from the field prop, we are going to destructure the value property. 
This basically gives the value of the date picker at any given time. Again, we will see how to use it in a few seconds. Now the render props pattern has to return JSX, which is the date view component from the library. So return date view. On this component, we first specify ID, which is equal to the name prop. And after that, we spread the field props. After that, we spread rest of the props that were passed in. Then we come to the two important props we had a look at in the beginning of the video. Selected and on change. For selected prop, we pass in the value of the field, which is equal to the value prop that we have destructured. And on change, we assign an arrow function. The function receives the changed value as its argument, which we can then pass on to the set field value method we have destructured from the form prop. The set field value method accepts two arguments. The first one is the name of the field, which is the name prop. And the second argument is the value to set. This is the changed value the function receives. This right here. If I now format it, you can see the JSX we are returning. With these props in place, we have hooked up our date view component with formic. The last part in the JSX is the error message component. So error message, name is equal to name and component is going to be equal to text error. So we have now completed step one. The second step is to add code in our formic control component. This again is the easy bit. For the switch statement, if the case is date, we return the date picker component that we have just created. Make sure to import it at the top. On the date picker component, leaving out control, we pass in rest of the props. That is our step two, returning the date picker component if the control prop is date. For the third and final step, we add code in the formic container component. First, at the top, we add a property to the initial values object. Let's call it birth date and the initial value is null. Next, let's add required validation to this field. Since this is a date field in the validation schema, birth date is going to be yup dot date dot required and the error is required. But we also mentioned that it could be null by specifying dot nullable. The so nullable allows us to set a null value. Finally, in the JSX, we can include the formic control. So formic control, control is equal to date, label is equal to pick a date, and name is equal to birth date. We can now save the file and test this out in the browser. Yarn start. And on page load, you can see that we have the date picker component. The initial value is null. If I click on the submit button, we have the validation message showing up. I can click on the date picker, select a value, and the value shows up in the input field. If I fill in the other values, and click on submit, you can see the birth date value showing up. Our date picker component works perfectly fine. Now, if you want to explore more props and configuration on this component, I have a video on this date picker in my practical React series. You can watch that video for a quick understanding or you can also go through the documentation. And there is one thing that you might encounter when dealing with date values in a form. Typically, when submitting the form data, you might not send the date value as a date type. 
you might end up having to run your form values through the json.stringify method. Or if you want to load saved data, when the API provides you with some JSON data and you try to parse it, you don't get back the date type value. Instead, you would probably get a UTC string formatted value. Let me quickly show that to you. In the onSubmit method, I'm going to add another log statement. Console.log saved data json.parse then json.stringify whatever were the values submitted. Let's go back to the browser, fill in the field values and submit the form. If you take a look at the form data, you can see that the birth date is a date value. However, if you take a look at the saved data, the birth date is a string value. So when you try to reinitialize your form with this saved data, your application is going to break. So what you have to do is add a date parser to your json.parse method, which will convert all valid dates to a JavaScript date instead of leaving it as a string. I want you guys to try that out as an exercise. Now the reason I wanted to add a date picker component is because one, I wanted to show you how to use a third party library with Formic and two, a date picker is something common in a lot of the forms. So I felt it is a good addition. Well, we now have completed all six Formic controls that we wanted to create. In the next few videos, let us see how to make use of these reusable components to create a few practical forms like login and registration. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.